So there's a lot of things going around the internet. Are people's systems not compatible with the upcoming Windows 11 because of TPM or Trusted Platform Module? And this is something I wanted to address. The short answer to this is, yeah, it's probably compatible. But the long answer is, it's probably not going to work out of the box for many people or you're going to run into a ton of installation <laughs> issues. I've, I can just see the comments and people calling me and texting me already. It's, it's going to be a huge mess because of TPM. But with that, let's get on the desktop and start going over what the problems are, how to overcome them, and have no problems when on Windows 11. I would go ahead and do all these things now so when Windows 11 does release and you upgrade to it from Windows 10, you don't have any problems. Also, for those folks that run Linux like me and dual boot, well, some of us will have to reinstall because we've gotten lazy and may have been using legacy boot, which, well, it's come on, it's been 10 years. Just you need to not use legacy boot anymore, and Windows 11 ensures that you're going to have major issues if you do. So first off, requirements for Windows 11. Uh, big thing here is hard floor and soft floor. Basically, if you don't have anything in the hard floor, it just isn't going to work. So you need at least two cores with the speed of greater than one gigahertz. And then you have memory, you need at least four gigs. Storage, 64 gigs. I think these are about double from what Windows 10 was. I could be wrong there. Uh, the TPM version 1.2 and, and secure boot capable equals true. This is really important. Older laptops don't have secure boot, and that means you can't upgrade to them. And on the laptop side of things, we are going to run into some shenanigans there too, which I will address. Uh, S mode, which I think pretty much everybody just disables S mode. I, I can't think of anybody that uses Windows S. It's just atrocious. That's another video though. And then the soft floors, TPM version 2.0. And I don't think they filled out CPU generation yet, but I imagine this is going to be CPU generation 2018 and above. So eighth gen Intels and second gen Ryzen's and above. Uh, but we are not going to have problems, I think, with the earlier stuff. And let's get into that. We'll start by going to our desktop here. And from the desktop, let's go ahead and check for TPM. So let's fix our TPM in this machine. I have an Asus BIOS here. We're just going to go F7. Come on over to Advanced. And then we're going to look right here for AMD FTPM configuration. And we want to change this to Firmware TPM. It'll show this notice. Basically, this is just saying, hey, if you replace your motherboard or your BIOS chip, it's not going to boot and cannot be restored. So you can back up your chip afterwards. Do you want to erase the TPM after factory reset? I would highly recommend changing this to disable just in case you switch your CPU out. You don't want this just completely wiping out your keys. And that'll give you a chance to actually back up your keys. I don't think you can restore TPM, but... Needless to say, you want to keep it disabled because any change to DPM could be very, very bad. Other things when you're booting here, uh, CSM or legacy boot, you want to actually just disable this completely. You can't have TPM and legacy boot. You have to do secure boot and this has to be disabled. So very important. You can still do Linux and other OSs, but they have to be UEFI. And if you are going to use secure boot, just remember, uh, back up your keys right here. Save all secure, and I think you can save them directly to a file system that's plugged in here. So with those changes, let's go ahead and save changes and reset. And you can see these are the modifications we made. And you can see since I set up my Linux with UEFI, I have my bootloader, which is Grub, on a separate hard drive, and everything's fine. Let's see if it boots into Windows now. All right, now we're just gonna go tpm.msc, and there we go. We have our full-blown TPM right here. Everything's registered properly, and you can see the specified version is 2.0, which is exactly what we need for Windows 11. Now on the limitation side of things, there's a couple things you need to know. First off being, well, it's gonna be needing to have a UEFI boot. I mentioned that, but that means you have to disable the CSIM module in your BIOS, also making sure to disable legacy boot. So if you do dual boot into Linux, well, that Linux better be UEFI. Doesn't necessarily have to be secure boot enabled, but it does need to be UEFI. 
The second thing is the TPM 2.0 compatibility. How capable are some of these old systems with TPM? And, well, there's chips and other things to make do or maybe band-aid or remedy the situation, but I don't want you to take those because this is happening. So right here, Windows 11 has already sparked the scalping of TPM 2.0 chips all the way up to $100 from about 24, 25 bucks. At 24, 25 bucks, I'd say, sure, why not? But with these scalpers, no. At this point, at $100 price point, you're better off just buying a newer motherboard with older chip compatibility and then just getting the TPM from there. You do not want to buy a $100 little tiny TPM chip. That's just ridiculous. Do not give these scalpers your money. You're better off either staying on Windows 10 with older hardware or upgrading your hardware in the fashion of a new motherboard or maybe even a new motherboard and CPU, depending on where you're at and what your hardware looks like. Mileage will vary, but do not give any money to these scalpers as this is just going to get worse. And in that same regard, I just want to say this about upgrading to Windows 11. If you're on Windows 10, you have old hardware, probably five plus years old. Stay on Windows 10. Do not upgrade. It's not going to be that great of a, a experience for you. And a lot of these new features are really geared towards newer hardware to where I'm just not certain on the compatibility. And in that same realm, it's never been a good experience for Windows users. For you guys, I would say, hey, try out Linux or other things if you want a different type of operating system. I'll leave a link to a playlist up here where I go from Windows 10 and, and transition to a full Linux environment, which works pretty darn well. And as long as you're not like a hardcore competitive online gamer, it'll probably work for you as well. With that said, though, let me know your comments down below and I'll see you in the next one.